Hey, what's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? It's me, Andrew Guy, the dastardly one, debonair, deranged, whatever you want to call it. It's been a hell of a year for all of us, for me included. And, you know, I, it, whether it was personally, politically, professionally, 2020 has taken a toll on me. And I, I wanted to call it something else. I wanted to blame it on someone. You know, in the past, you see me blame it on my old teammates or on the league or on the wheel or, you know, this season it was the Shmominati. And for a minute there, I thought I was really onto something. I did. I, I promise you I would never sell something to you guys on false pretenses. I truly believed that I had found the reason why I was struggling so much in 2020. And I was wrong. You know, I, I don't ever like to admit that I was wrong. And I haven't done it much in my life, period. Especially not in the Schmodown, because honestly, I haven't been wrong much. I've been better than you and you've known it. And I've been okay with that. But in 2020, I haven't been. And so I'm sorry. To you, the Schmodown fans, the community, the Action Army, I mean... My brothers and sisters in arms. I mean, my fellow competitors. I, I, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I thought my phone was muted. Um, my fellow competitors, my brothers and sisters in arm. I just, I thought that I had done. <sighs> sorry, I, I honestly, guys, I really, I, I really didn't mean to do this. Here, I'm just gonna mute it. We can just, we can just roll it back. What? No, 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 no. I, 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 I specifically went. I checked this. I checked it. I know. I. It can't be. Um. <laughs> I, uh, I have to go. I, uh, we, we can pick this up later. Kristen, Kristen, you can, we can pick this up later. I'm so, I got guys. I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta go. What? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the movie trivia showdown. We're in the semifinals, and what a match we have here today. I'm Christian Harloff, and joining me, as always, Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. Hello, Mark. How are you doing? Christian, and I am doing great, and what a matchup we have today. Look at this. When you do, I want to go right to the faction standings because corruption, have they been on a roll? I think that'd be an understatement. And to talk about the season they're having, they're oh so close to sealing up getting a championship faction wise maybe not in this tournament but when you talk about this team's tournament that we're currently engaged in uh they got a pretty good squad their name is deception and i would be frightened of them if i was the odd couple even given the odd couple's incredible legacy in this league well you said it man the corruption right now if they win here today, it's going to be very hard. It is still mathematically possible for either Swag or Finstock Exchange. One of those teams, Swag more likely to catch up to Corruption, but very unlikely. If they get three points here today, they have almost sealed the faction championship if they're able to do it. But Roxy Stryer and the Rockstars have already played spoil to factions trying to climb up the ladder she did it with uh stacy howard not too long ago against gray drake so the rock stars can do it here today the odd couple are former champions the odd couple should be the favorites and are the favorites they're the former champions but it's because of this phenom this We'll call him freak of nature, X-Men mutant, if you will, uh, Adam Collins and what he's been doing this season and pair him up with Marisol McKee, who's also incredible, a new rookie. And Shannon has found all stars in this crazy, crazy half season that we've already found. 
You know, I, I like that you're going with the X-Men comparison, or as you call them, X-Men, because you have, like, the popular mutants that you've known for years, and those are in the X-Men movies. But then you go to X-Men First Class, and a lot of people, including you, think that's the best X-Men movie ever, and what we're getting with Deception would be corruption first class because we don't know that much about them but wow are they good at answering movie trivia questions correct and with the original x-men with andraco and snyder you gotta wonder are they still at the top of their game they've been there for so long do they have another run in them we're about to find out the answers to a lot of these questions and in doing so we're going to be asking a lot of questions that we encourage you at home to play along with because it's movie trivia who doesn't love it? Well, we also want to see how Snyder going to respond. We saw what Snyder did against Paul Oyama this season, revenge. We saw what Snyder did against Ethan Irwin this year, revenge. And we saw what he did to Riley a second time. You know, he is he's on fire right now. And what he wants to do, he wants to put a little revenge on Adam Collins. No one's beaten Adam Collins. No one's beaten him in singles. No one beaten him in da damn free for all uh, for the Hari. Stayed in there from number six all the way to the end. And he hasn't lost in teams. So, you know, Snyder and Andreco want to be the first ones to give this guy a loss and send him on his way and send corruption out of the tournament. But we're going to show you all of that. We're going to show you exactly how we got to be here. Here we go. be more pleased to introduce into the team's tournament Lady Justice and the Coyote as Deception. Let's see, who's next? Oh, the odd couple. Adam Collins. See me here? <laughs> I'm not. We're not just rookies trying to hang out with the big dogs and show that we're we're cool enough to stick around. We gained victories, and we're gonna keep doing it in this tournament. You mad, Andrew guy? Sorry I didn't yell at the camera. Enough for you. Too bad that still didn't stop this proud Mary from dispatching you faster than Riggs from that silly TV show. Surely they buckle under the pressure of playing seasoned veterans like Andrew Guy and Ethan Irwin. Correction, the only pressure we felt during that match was finishing it inside of two rounds so that we could get Guy back to Shmominati daycare in time for his juice box and afternoon nap. All I want to do is push on that five-pointer and it really kills me that I didn't do that. We have no idea if Adam Collins knows the deep cuts. For the singles tournament to have added that to my resume and gotten a shot at Dan Merle, even though you denied me that. It means that I get to win this match. Get ready, boys. Court is in session. You're about to run into the Jeff Snyder Revenge Tour. Anyone who's ever beaten me is going down. Marisol, you better hope that you don't let this guy down because the pressure is all on you, sweetheart. Jeff Snyder is, as you said, one of the greatest players to ever play this game. And today we just didn't win this one, but I'm excited to go up against you guys in teams because I really know what the odd couple is going to do to you. You can't get in their heads. Adam and Marisol are unshakable. We may be good, yes, but until we show dominance in the team's division, the jury's still out on our overall ability. Correction. Lady Justice and I have already proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that tenure in the Schmodown is purely a state of mind. Together, we've racked up dozens of points for our faction and raised the bar for our competition. With Marisol McKee by my side, we can beat all of you. Hope you can handle it. Odd cup. Forever odd. Forever out. I'll get typed up and Snyder knows it. Snyder wants to take this kid out and Draco wants to take this kid out and 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 Marisol McKee and Adam Collins they want to prove that they are the real deal I think they've already done it but if they can do this beat the odd couple former champions they beat a former champion last time in Ethan Irwin knocked him out uh, and Andrew Guy a two-time teams uh, ultimate showdown teams finalist 
they're for real. So this is going to be a battle. We know that. And I'm very excited to see it. But it's about you mentioned in the beginning of the show here, Mark. It's about this rivalry that's been going on between Shannon and Roxy. Roxy knows how to get under Shannon's skin, even when Shannon says, no, she doesn't. She does. And whether or not that's going to happen here today, I don't know. But this is a big match for Swag and Finstock Exchange. This is a big match for the two of those. They want and they're pulling for the rock stars in the odd couple right now. It's pretty much and over if, if corruption wins. It's one of the things we love about the Schmodown. Regardless of where you may be in the faction standings, you know that you're going to get everybody's A effort. And that includes the managers who we now welcome in with Roxy Stryer of the rock stars and Shannon Barney, the queen of corruption. So Shannon, Roxy, we have enjoyed your interactions heartily throughout the season but Shannon you're sitting on the precipice of a possible championship very early with a lot of matches remaining so are there any words you'd like to say to your counterpart well to nobody's surprise Roxy showed up looking like a non-union extra for hustlers um so I had to at least meet her halfway here um not really much to say here I mean Roxy can't beat us I'm I'm excited to be here I'm excited for deception to come in and knock these guys out uh Snyder, Roxy, throw every trick in your book at them. I mean, I don't know if you watched them knock out Guy and Ethan. Guy tried his hardest, his damnedest, to get under their skin, to rattle them, to say whatever he could, because he couldn't answer questions, so he had to throw stones instead. And they got knocked out for it. So be my guest. Try it if you'd like, but it'll be to your own demise. Roxy, um, this is like... Uh, hi, Roxy. I mentioned up hi. top here that you have played spoiler before when people need the points and people need to move move on. And I basically asked you the same question I did when you beat the exchange. I know that getting the win for the odd couple is huge for you, but how much more does it add to be able to beat Shannon and take away that potential um, championship? It's not a guarantee, but it would lock it if they won here today. This is a dream scenario for me. We're in a win-win here because... Honestly, once we win, Shannon is gonna cry her little crown off, you know, the one that she wears to remind herself she's such a queen, slay queen, slay. Uh, and I can't wait for that moment. And then also Odd Forever. The Odd Couple, it's no surprise to anybody. They are my favorite team and the greatest team ever. I am completely obsessed with these men. I would do anything for them and they'd do anything for me, including winning today. So. Really excited about this one, Christian and Mark. Thanks for having us here to slaughter what is this new team that thinks that they're great. It's fine. All right, Rosh. Uh, Shannon. Oh. Done talking. I, I've learned it's very important to tune out what Rosh says because I value my intelligence. And when she starts speaking, I become dumber. And I don't want my brain to corrode. This is a very important match. So. We value our intelligence, and I don't know what she said, but good luck. Let's have some fun. Next uh, time, I'll just wave. You can mute the entire match, honey, because you don't do much managing anyway. So, you know, you can just put it on mute now and come back okay, at the end. Okay, sexy numbers. Here. Say that to the standings. All right. Sexy numbers. Thank Bye. you. All right, guys. Thank you to both Shannon and Roxy doing exactly what we thought they would do. But this means a lot. And like I said to you, Mark, it is not – mathematically 100% that corruption wins a championship but it's pretty close to it it'd be very hard for the other, the other teams to catch up so with that being said are you ready uh, I'll, I guess I'll be Randolph you be Mortimer uh, the usual bet Christian ladies and gentlemen it's time for the movie trivia schmodown introducing first Representing Corruption with a record of one win, no defeats, with one knockout, Lady Justice Marisol McKee and the 2020 Ultimate Schmodown winner, Adam the Coyote. Collins, this is Deception. Deception has arrived. Adam Collins, Lady Justice. Mariscal, let's start here with you. This is a major, major match. Now, not that the last one wasn't, 
you guys knocked out both Irwin and Guy. Did that match give you even more confidence going in against a seasoned team like Snyder and Draco? Um, I mean, confidence, I guess, in the regards of just looking at the record, but this is a reset. You know, this is, this is just going to be another meal, another snack on the assembly line. Um, doesn't give us any more confidence because we already came out the gate, guns blazing. So, you know, can't get any higher from here. Uh, nice reminder, I forgot to eat lunch today. Um, Adam Collins, let me ask you, you and Marisol both seem to have a style once the match actually starts where you're very focused, you're very locked in, there isn't a whole lot of chatter, but the odd couple, they can come in, they're joking around, they're pulling on their suspenders. Is there any fear that maybe they can get inside your psyche a little bit and rattle your cage? I mean, I'm fun too, I went roller skating once. But look, I'm prepared for these two. They're a championship level team. And it's fine that they want to dance around and, and do what they do. And I know that they do have a good time. It's not that we don't. It's just we're hungrier. Plain and simple. Adam, let me stay there with you. With you've you've matched up with Snyder before. You've battled Snyder in a five rounder before. So is there anything that you learned from playing Snyder? Uh, how to deal with him this round? Yeah, I mean, I learned that he's very good at, uh, you know, undressing. Uh, you know, I, I give him full credit for that. I think he has, a, a, you know, a small part waiting for him in Magic, Mike, Triple XL. But honestly, uh, I'm, I'm here uh, because I know what Lady Justice and I are capable of together. I know that it's going to take a near perfect game to take us down. Uh, and I don't, I don't know that Odd Couple, as good as they are, are up to the task. So let's go. All right, thank you to both uh, Adam Collins and Lady Justice. We'll see you in a moment. Christian, I think I just gave you an idea for uh, Collins' next promo. We got to get that kid on roller skates before 2025. Correction, rollerblades. And their opponents representing the Rock Stars with a record of seven wins. Four defeats and four knockouts. They are the former movie trivia schmodown team champions of the world, the Androids, Mark and Draco, and the two time movie trivia schmodown team champion, Jeff Ian Snyder Snyder, the Odd Couple. Odd Couple, hearts and prayers and thoughts to the former IG champ, Kevin Smets, as we see here. Some love for the Smasher. All right, Snyder, let me start with you here, man. I know, and I said it up top, man, with the uh, revenge that you've been laying on some people this year. You told me afterwards that you think Collins is one of the best players that you've seen in this game. I didn't say anything of the sort. He's terrible. Do you believe that? And do because of that, do you think that taking him out today would even cement the fact more so that you are the best player in the game? Uh, listen, I'm going to take him out for a variety of reasons. It's not about being the best player in the game. It's about getting my belt back, Christian. I am on the warpath. I want a reunion with that belt. And he's in my way, and it's a shame that he's got a rookie like Marisol next to him because she's probably going to, you know, poop the bed. All right. All right. Uh, huge props to Kevin Smets. He's forcing Jeff Snyder to wear a shirt today. Thank you, Kevin. Mark Andreco is also part of the Odd Couple. And Andreco, you are the Odd Couple for a reason. Maybe you contrast in styles, but when y'all get together, you seem to have a great time. So is it going to be a great time, win or lose, or is this going to be a disappointed Odd Couple if you don't make a deep run into this tournament? Um, you know, I think I think our last match proved that when Jeff and I get together, and we're good. And I think that knocked a little of the ring rust off as I, I, I misanswered a question. But uh, I think we're when we're together, we're we're pretty unbeatable because we are we, my weaknesses aren't his and vice versa, and we know each other. We're actually friends, and we've been in the same room before. Uh, that that actual camaraderie makes a difference, as we saw against Jader and um, 
Brandon, that that's a that's an X factor. So while I'm 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 very I'm respectful of their talent, I think they're amazing players. Um, I don't think they're on they're, they're not an unbeatable team. Uh, everyone who has starts out really well has a great mythos around themselves, and Adam has earned his mythos. But Adam is ultimately human, so you know somebody's got to be the first person. And I did it. I was the first person to beat Ethan. I beat Drew McQueenie. I kicked Ben Bateman's ass on multiple occasions. I'm respectful of them, but I'm not intimidated by them. Fair enough. All right. So that being said, the odd couple has arrived. Deception has arrived. And we see ourselves with a fight here. Mark. Hello, movie trivia schmodown. How is everybody doing? Thank you for watching the match here today. And look, everybody has had to adjust to 2020 it's been a real uh mind f if you will and it's it's tough and for everybody out there you need stress relief that goes beyond just quick fixes and you know what that is that's headspace what is headspace well headspace is your daily dose of mindfulness and it's in the form of guided meditations in an easy to use app one of the only meditation apps advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research whatever the situation is Headspace really can make you feel better. If you're overwhelmed, Headspace has a three minute SOS meditation for you. If you need some help falling asleep, Headspace has wind down sessions that members swear by. And for parents, which was helpful for me, Headspace even has morning meditations that you can do with your kids. Headspace's approach to mindfulness, it can reduce stress, it can improve sleep, it boasts focus, and it increases your overall sense of well being. That was why, for me, that it worked out because, like I said, with the kids and trying to say, Lord, this isn't normal for a lot of people. This is this new life that we have here in 2020. So, a peace and calm, it works. So check it out, go to Headspace, and it's backed by 25 published studies on its benefits, 600,000 five-star reviews, and over 60 million downloads. Headspace makes it easy for you to build a life-changing meditation practice with mindfulness that works for you on your schedule, anytime, anywhere. Here's the bottom line. You deserve to be happier. And Headspace is meditation made simple. You go to headspace.com slash the schmodown. Headspace.com slash the schmodown for a free one month trial. It's free. Try it for a month. See if you like it. Headspace.com slash the schmodown for a free one month trial with access to Headspace's full library for meditations on every situation. It's the best deal offered right now, but you got to head over to headspace.com slash the schmodown and do it today. You're going to thank me for it. One month free. Go. All right. Let's uh, get the rules of round number one. Ah, my favorite part of the show. Round number one, the field of competitors will be asked eight questions from eight different corners of movie trivia schmodown know-how. This is a team match. However, round number one is an individual exercise of your brain and your knowledge that lies therein. Each question is worth one point. No penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round number one. Wink, wink. As soon as you hear a question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please reveal your answer to the camera. At the same time, you verbalize your answer into the microphone. Once again, you may not rely on your teammates' knowledge for any answers in round number one. Each squad has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration <laughs> of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds, use a JTE rule named for famous Wisconsin snack, JTE. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three round match. Your challenge may be initiated by either teammate, then we'll bring in your manager. They'll confirm and ratify that said challenge is taking place. Christian, the private chat's for everyone, but we might as well rename it the Roxy Chat. I'm ready to go. All right, so we start. Mark Andreco, are you ready? Yes, sir. Adam Collins, are you ready? I am. Jeff Snyder? More ready than Marisol. Don't blow it. And Marisol? Courts in session, Snyder. Let's do it. Then let's get ready to schmodown. All right, round number one, question number one. In the realm of action adventure, which actress plays a woman who gets mixed up with a disgraced spy in the 2010 film Night and Day? Let me ask you this, Christian. You ever met a spy? Oh, well, like, I would know that, Mark. What, no, no. Like, you have, like a high school buddy or something that went on like the FBI? Well, I wouldn't know that, Mark. Five, 
four, three, two, That's one. Yes. Down, hands up, and mark. Cameron Diaz. Yes. Collins. Cameron Diaz. Jeff Snyder. Retired but not forgotten. Cameron Diaz. And Lady Justice. Cameron Diaz. Is she retired? Is that true? Yep. Oh, right. I don't. They all that. retire, then they all unretire. Directors, <laughs> performers, the whole lot of them. Didn't you retire from something once upon a time, Christian? And oh, here we go. Your next question. 1990s is the category, and here's the question. Who stars as the lead character Hawkeye in the 1992 historical drama, The Last of the Mohicans? Nice. Uh, Christian, yes. You, you remember seeing Night and Day, how much we loved it? Couldn't stand it. It was the birth of the cartoon cat. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Adam Collins. Daniel Day Lewis. Yes. Snyder. Daniel Day Lewis. Marisol. Daniel Day Lewis. And Mark Andreco. The also retired Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> Absolutely wait, right. Wait, For now. Wait. For now. What? Did Marisol technically hyphenated Day Lewis? You want to challenge that? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what the rules are for these things. It's a different last name. It's up to you. Do you want to challenge? You want to bring Roxy in, and you want to, you want to challenge us? I'd like to bring Roxy in to discuss it. You got you, you got you have about twenty seconds to decide if you're going to challenge. Roxy wrote Daniel Day hyphen Lewis. Right, but uh, based on what they decide, do you think that she could have possibly been confusing him with somebody else? Mark, what do you think on this it's one? Not, it's it's you know not what? worth doing. Whatever, Five it's seconds. not worth it. Maybe there's a hyphen. I love where your head. I love your head. All right, no okay. challenge. No challenge. No challenge. All right, here we go. So let's get to the next. Let's get to the next one. All right, here I it is. Tell you, Marisol. Question three. Category of dramas. Which actor stars as a lawyer who suffers a brain injury in the 1991 film regarding Henry? Speaking of brain injuries. Um, did you want to give us a little cartoon cat, Christian, real quick? No, he's retired. Like Daniel Day Lewis. Five. Everybody's retired. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Start with Marisol. Harrison Ford. Yes. Mark Andreco. Written by J.J. Abrams. Harrison Ford. Thank you for revealing one of the next trivia questions. Mark Andreco. Adam the Coyote. Harrison Ford. Yes. And Jeff Snyder. Harrison Ford, and there probably was a hyphen Marisol, so. All right, so here we go. Here's the next question mark, number four. The next question is in the world of directors, and it is for a point. Who directed the film, The Darjeeling Limited? Sometimes the writers really take care of me, and they just give me a short little question to preserve my Vermont maple syrup voice. I like it. Five, four, three, Two, one. Pens down, please. And Mark Andreco. Wes Anderson, and I drew an ironic monocle and a bowler hat. Well, there you go. Uh, Adam Collins. Wes Anderson. Yes. Jeff Snyder. Wes Anderson. And Lady Justice. The uh, hyphen free Wes Anderson. <laughs> nice. So we see ourselves now for four, four, four. Uh, excuse me. Actually, eight to eight. Everybody's got four. Everybody's gotten all four questions right, so it is eight to eight. As we get to our next question, fantasy sci-fi. In what fantasy film does a corporate lawyer named Peter Banning learn that he is actually the famous character Peter Pan? Oh, dear God. And Peter Pan. Is it really true? Like, if you just think happy, is that all that it requires? Flight in that mythology? That's what they say. Think Five, happy four, three, two, one. Pens down, please, starting with Adam Collins. My favorite Blues Travelers song, Hook. Yes, Snyder. Hook. Marisol. Hook. And Mark Andreco. Hook. You see here, what a match it is. Ten, ten. Going into our next question, Mark, question number six. Yeah, they're not missing a lot, Christian, and by not a lot, I mean nothing yet. But now we progress to the world of comedies. <laughs> Appreciate it. For one point, which 1980s spoof comedy is known for the line, looks like I picked the wrong week 
to quit sniffing glue. Something Christian says in his brain each and every week. Day. <laughs> you know, I like a lot of Loose Traveler. I don't know any of the songs except for Run Around. Five, four, and I'm sorry. Three, two, one. Pens down, please. Uh, repeat the question. First one. Got it, yes. got it in. Uh, categories comedy is the question. Which 80s spoof comedy is known for the line, looks like I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue? Never sniff glue myself. Doesn't look like a something you want to pick up, kids. That jacket says otherwise. Five, four, Please. three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start with Jeff Snyder. I have no idea. Blazing Saddles? That's incorrect. Lady Justice? The Naked Gun? It's incorrect. Mark Andreco? Airplane? Yes. And Collins? Airplane. All right. So Collins and Andreco stay perfect, and the, the score stays tied as 11 11. Snyder and Marisol missed that one, but Andreco and Collins staying perfect. Mark, here's the next one Horror slash thriller. Eli Roth directed this 2006 film in which three backpackers head to an Eastern European city to party with no idea of the hell that awaits them. Can you name me one movie where backpackers end up having a, just a nice, relaxing trip? An American Werewolf in London. Stand by me. I think you got to see the end of that movie, Mark. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Marital. Hostel. Yes, Mark Andreco. The unwatchably bad Hostel. Uh, Adam Collins. Hostel. And Jeff. Hostel. All right. So it is 1313 getting to our last question here. Now, if Mark Andreco and Adam Collins hit their questions, they get a bonus question. Here is the question mark. Yeah, and I spoke too soon about the writers, Christian. They gave me a mouthful here. It's in the category of animated films. These are movies that could be drawn by hand on a computer stop motion. Here it is for a point. Bless you. Name the 2009 American stop-motion animated dark fantasy film. It's directed by Henry Selick, based on the 2002 novella of the same name by Neil Gaiman, and featuring the voice talents of Dakota Fanning, Terry Hatcher, and Ian McShane. Woo! That might be a record. I hope someone asked you for a repeat. I knew, I knew you were going to say that. And five, four... Three, two, one. Pens down. Mark Andreco. Coraline. Yes. Adam Collins. Coraline. Snyder. Coraline. And Marisol. <sighs> Coraline. All right. So Adam Collins, Mark Andreco, gentlemen, you two will yep. be getting the Thanks, question here. Now, you do have to write it down. Here it comes. Are you ready, Adam? Yes. Are you ready, Mark? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Okay. Who plays the character of Jacob Black in the Twilight series? They seem confident in the writing anyway, Christian. Five, four, three, Two, one, pens down, please. We start with Adam Collins. Taylor Lautner. Yes, and Mark Andreco. Taylor Lautner. Nine apiece. So what an absolute round for both the odd couple and for December. Fifteen. Nice round, everybody. 15-15. What a match it is. Collins goes perfect, and Draco goes perfect. Snyder hits seven. Lady Justice hit seven. All right, round number two, Mark. How's it go? Which Taylor Lautner questions will you hear in round number two? Well, that's determined by the wheel of fate, doom, and justice. Each team gets a spin at the wheel. Once you settle on a category, six questions will be asked to the team. Teams may confer with each other for each and every question. There were two points apiece. If you need multiple choice, ask us. We'll give you four options, one of which is probably the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Keep in mind, team, stealing is available 
in round number two. We're going to kick the opposite team out of the stream. We'll bring them back in time to answer any questions that may have a steal. So, Christian, it is tied, but because the odd couple gets a tiebreaker, they were introduced second, if you recall. They get to decide whether they'd like to spin first or defer. So now Jeff, Mark, and Roxy, who loves her boys so very much, are going to decide whether they want that first spin or whether they want to give that to their opponent. All right, so we're going to remove both the Collins, and I'm pretty sure I just saw Mike Collins asking a headdress. I'm not sure. All right, so we start here with Roxy Stryer. you got 60 seconds to decide if you want to go first or second starting now. So proud of you guys. You're killing it. Amazing perfect round mark. Amazing close to perfect, Great Jeff. Start. How are you guys Thanks. feeling right now? Jeff, I know your thing recently has been going second. I, I think we should let them go first and see what we're up against. And that way we can see whether we can go to multiple choice on certain questions and, and or spin again, you know, that kind of thing. I think we should go second. Mark, how are you feeling? I will defer to Jeff. I think going second's really smart here too. Uh, this is a tough team and in order to beat them, we're gonna have to kick butt in this round. Uh, so let's go second, let's give the ball to them and let's see what we have to do. And I know we'll cool. be able to do it. Awesome. All right. So that is the decision. Adore from, you guys. All right. So sexy. Once again, odd couple, you guys are going to watch the spin. And then once the spin is in, that's when you go <laughs> to a separate room. All right. Removing odd forever. former champions. Roxy, you will stay behind. Please keep your hands up as they are right now. And now we bring back Shannon and Deception. All right, Shannon, you have 60 seconds to discuss with your team before they spin starting now. Yes. Marisol, I don't know if you agree with me, but maybe Jeff Snyder should spend less time trying to rock your boat and more time focusing on his answers because he missed too. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he's still dreaming about Mike's package. Who knows? But uh, his head's not in the game. He's too distracted by you and your beautiful face. So use that to your advantage. Adam, I mean, you're, perfect. Right for <laughs> you're perfect. Marisol, you can shake off that one question you got wrong. We're exactly where we want to be. This is exactly what we expected to happen. We want to go first. Let's get this wheel up and let's get an amazing spin and make them nervous. Let's go. All right, here comes the wheel and the spin is in. Is the first All right, Chris, is that Meryl Streep I saw on the wheel? I did see her. I saw her there. Everyone can't, wherever you are, reactors. Oh, oh <laughs> Snyder's losing his mind right now. Snyder's mm. losing his mind right now. All right, so All right. More yeah. you two, right. check in with each other. What do we want to do here? The world is your friggin' oyster. Mm. Well, there's a lot of tasty options on there, Lady Justice. Um, I know uh, one director and one lady that uh, we probably wouldn't mind taking a crack at, but what do you think? Um. Hmm. I think our head is. I think our head is. I think our heads are in the same exact place. Um, you want to go towards that director? How do you feel about that? Let's go with Spike Lee. All right. You guys keep right. stay in touch with each other. Listen to each other. Listen to the questions. Trust each other. Let's do it. Let's go. All right. All right. Thank you, Shannon. Shannon, same thing. Please stay with hands up. And then if we can have Mark and Draco and Snyder go to the next room. Okay, they are out. Just waiting for the word for them. And we are gonna bring up the Spike Lee category, and then we'll start answering questions once we get confirmation. And just a friendly reminder, if uh, you can let us know it's your final answer, unless it was a declarative statement, and if you say A, B, C, or D, if you wanna help us out by saying A for Apple, B for boy, and so on and so forth. All right, and we're ready to go. So here we go. Are you guys ready? We're ready. All right, here is the first question. Spike Lee received his first Oscar nomination in which category? That would be, I think we both know this. Mm -hmm. That would be um, original screenplay. Yes, best original screenplay, final answer. It's correct for two points. All right, here is the second one. Which Spike Lee film stars Damon Wayans Savion Glover and Jada Pinkett Smith. Adam. Yes. This is Bamboozled. Bamboozled, final answer. Correct. That is correct. All right, two more points. Here's question three. In the Spike Lee film, Chirac, the film revolves around two warring gangs, the Spartans and the what? Adam. Yes. It's the Trojans. The Trojans. 
Trojan's final answer. Correct for two more points. Question three. Here's question four. In He Got Game, Denzel Washington's character is serving time in prison for what crime? He uh, he killed his wife. Um, yeah. Stained. He killed his wife. Final answer. Would have accepted murder, but yes, that is correct. All right. <laughs> Commonly known as murder is killing someone. That's right. So that was question number three, I believe. Yes? Four. That was question four. Here's question. Here's the next one. What state is the primary setting for the 2018 film Black Klansman? It's the, uh, it's the Rocky Mountain state, isn't it? Colorado? Uh, I'll allow it, yeah. Colorado, final answer. Correct for two points. And finally, who plays Sal, the owner of Sal's Pizzeria in the film Do the Right Thing? Bring it home, Lady Justice. That would be Danny Aiello. Final two, answer. Final answer. For two more points, Deception, annihilating that character, absolutely annihilating, no field opportunities whatsoever, and we are going to remove them and wait for the odd couple. But that was that was something else, man. Hey, Christian, I think they just did to that category what Denzel Washington was in prison for in He Got Game because that was some sort of crushing, murderous rampage they just went on. They got all the points, did not need to check the multiple choice, and now the odd couple is facing quite a mountain to scale. All right, you guys, it is 28-16. Uh, they got every single question right, all two points. And it was, uh, it was, I'll be honest, something to see. So uh, here is, here is the, uh, so because there are no steal opportunities, you are going to get Roxy here and you get 60 seconds to talk starting now. And it was a ridiculous round. When I know most of the questions, you know it's crazy. It was nothing to see. It was there were literally no nothing to see. No deep cut. You guys are fine. No deep cuts, which means in round three, we just don't know what they're capable of there. Let's make sure we take them there. Let's make sure that we win this game. You guys got it. Communicate with each other. Let's see what we spin on the wheel. We got to go big or go home on this one. So we got to make sure that we feel comfortable with what we got. Okay, guys? I can't wait to watch their questions at home. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was not something to see. It was, I saw it. I saw it. It was certainly I'll, not something. I'll, I'll read them to you after the match. All right, here's, here we go. So here's the wheel. And there's the spin. All right, spinners and opponents' choice lurking there, Christian. And if odd couples turn spinners' choice, they too will get to select which category they feel most comfortable with. That'd be nice. Put that energy out there, Mark. And Meryl Streep, it is. Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. Do we do it, Mark? Fifty seconds. I, I, I think with opponents' choice out there and them getting a perfect round. I know we can get a majority of the questions in this category. I think I think we better safe than sorry. I, I agree. I think we got to stick with it. I'm completely with you guys on this one. You've got this. Make sure you communicate. Do not answer a question individually, even if you're positive. Yeah. That oh, you we'll, always check. we'll always check with each other. Always check. Sure. You guys yeah. got this. Meryl Street. Meryl Street. All right. Meryl Street. So we're going to remove rocks and Shannon's going to stay. And now Adam Collins and Marisol will jump to the next room. As soon as we get word, we will start. Asking questions from the realm of Meryl Streep. Christian Schmodown Nation is thrilled that the odd couple stuck with Meryl Streep. You ever get the impression when Roxy is coaching her young ones that it's kind of like a doting mother dropping her kids off at the beach, making them use the buddy system, don't lose track of each other? Yeah. Uh, Roxy needs to keep her hands up, though. I'll tell you that much. As do Mark and Jeff when they're answering questions. Yes, yes. All right. All right. So hands up, guys, and we are about to start the second round. Mark. Let's get to it, Meryl Streep. Here we are, gentlemen. Meryl Streep, the beloved performer of everyone in the Schmodown fandom. And your first question for two points. In what animated film from director Wes Anderson do Meryl Streep and George Clooney portray a married couple? It's the fantastic Mr. Fox, right? Yes, the fantastic okay. Mr. Fox. I'm going to say it then. Fantastic Mr. Fox, final answer. That is correct for two points, and they're off to the start they needed to be. All right, here is the second one. All right, gentlemen, in the world of Meryl Streep, who directed Meryl Streep in the 2008 film, Doubt? 
doubt. I know it was. Um, was that wasn't that just the director? Wasn't it? Or wasn't it just wasn't it just the writer John I, Patrick Shanley? I think it was. Four. Yeah, absolutely. Three. Yeah, John John Patrick Shanley. Final answer. Nice pull for two more points. All right, here's question number three. All righty, gentlemen, staying in the wild, wacky, wonderful world of Meryl Streep. What is the only film in which Meryl Streep has returned to reprise her role for a sequel? You need the name of the sequel. I, I got it, Michael. Or it, it's, it, it's Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, right? Yes, absolutely. Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, final answer. Mamma Mia, they're on fire, Christian. Three questions remain in the world of Meryl Streep to possibly go perfect and tie. Deception going into round number three. Fourth question, which Spielberg film did Meryl get her most recent nomination for Best Actress? I, I, I think it's, it's the, the post, post, right? Yeah, The Post. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, the Post, final answer. Also a good breakfast cereal company. The Post is correct, and Christian, they're having the round they needed to have thus far. All right, here's the next one. This is your penultimate question in the world of Meryl Streep. And here it is. Meryl Streep plays a shady U.S. senator by the name of Eleanor Shaw in what 2000s film? I know this too. Is it Lions for Lambs? No, no, no it's not. No, 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 no. What is it? I, I think it's Manchur the Manchurian Candidate. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The Manchurian you're right. Candidate, final answer. That is correct for two more points. Good Christian. save, Jeff. There. Good save. Good thinking. One question away from tying deception. Spike Lee and Meryl Streep. What question? Doesn't matter how tough they are. These teams know it. And to prove it one more time and all night, Meryl Streep and Alec Baldwin play an ex-wife and ex-husband in this 2009 romantic comedy. Hands up there, Mark and Jacob. Oh, so, so, sorry, sorry. I, 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 I know what it is, though, Mark. It, it's 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 complicated, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's it is. complicated final answer. <laughs> it certainly is, and it's also complicated oh, to figure out who's going to win this game because that's a perfect round two for the odd couple. Christian, once again, we are Nicely tied. done, Jeff. 28 oh, points. Man. Unbelievable. All right, so we're going to get Deception back in here, and once they are, we'll bring back uh, both managers. But tying the game, what an absolute performance by both of these teams here. 20 yes. 28 so far unbelievable battle we have as we get to the final round unbelievable mark on um, just a, a crazy thing that you rarely witness where you could be looking at at points records if not for individuals then maybe for combined with the teams i mean this is a high scoring affair I believe that the uh, I think 37 is our is the team's record. I believe for a three round match. I believe. Okay, let's push that to the limit. But I mean, combined, you could be looking at 76 points. All right. So right now we have a 28 28 game as we get to the third and final round. Mark, what are the rules? Oh, I guess to do the rules for this round too. It is round three. This is the round that. I'll say might determine the match, unless we probably do go to sudden death overtime, given the power of these two teams. In round number three, we need three numbers from each squad. These numbers can range from one to 20. You may not pick the same numbers as your opposing team. Why? Well, because each one corresponds to a unique category of movie, trivia, schmodown, know-how. First question's worth two points. Next one worth three points. Final one is worth five big points. Because this is the team's match, you get to confer with your teammate just for the five pointer. For the two pointer, you're gonna hear the category and the team must select which member is gonna answer that solo. The opposite team member will then answer the three pointer solo. All right, so we start here with the odd couple. Three numbers, please. Up to you, Mark. Um, four, nine, and 15. Yes, that's um, what I was thinking. Yeah. Sexy numbers. And deception. Oh, good. Hmm. Um, I think I picked last time, Adam. You picked this time. Okay. <coughs> Let's go with, uh, sorry, what were their numbers again? Sorry, guys. Uh, four, 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 nine, nine and 15. Okay. Trash start. <laughs> All right. Let's go with 10, 11, and is 20 an option? Yes. Okay, 10, 11, and 20. Yeah. May not be sexy numbers, but those are winning numbers, baby. Not Shannon, you got 60 seconds to talk to your team starting now. You guys look great. Are we worried? 
Yeah. I'm ready. Are we, are we excited? Are I'm we excited, excited to answer these three questions? Yeah. You should be. You should be. Uh, this is exactly what we were hoping for. We wanted a good game. We're getting a great game. I believe in you two. You two believe in yourselves. You two believe in each other. You got each other's backs. You're on the same page. You're both playing beautifully. You have all your repeats left. If anything sounds wonky, you've got a challenge at your disposal. Trust your guts. Listen to the questions. Take the clues. And let's freaking do this, baby. Let's do it. All right. Okay, so, hey, hey, even out these, this odd couple here. Let's do it. Roxy, 60 seconds. Uh, Marisol's even worse with directions than I am. What did she get lost along the way? Guys, Shannon might believe in them. Everybody knows the manager in the league who believes in a team the absolute most is me believing in you guys. You guys got this. This game has been incredible so far. You guys are on fire. That communication is unbelievable. Thank God for you guys actually being a team who works together, who knows each other, who, yeah, has been in the same room. That's what's going to get you through this part. Take your time to JTEs. Uh, this is your guys' game. Let's make sure that the Coyote loses his first game yet. That's what this is all about, too. We believe them so much so that we had to write it on a whiteboard to remind you. What is going on? Quiet right, so. over there, Barney. This is not your time to talk. Oh, Mark, Jeff, you got this. I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta mute you there. It's not your time. In the time. middle of my 60 seconds. Is she kidding I, me? I think her crown's a little too Ten, tight. 10 more seconds. Mark, Jeff, you feel good? Yep. Good. You got this, babies. All right. All right. So we're going to drop out the managers. And we will start with Deception with their two-pointer. You chose category number 10, Will Smith. Who's going to take it? You want to take this one, Marisol? Um, yeah, that's favorable. I'll take, I'll take Will Smith. Either right. of us could handle him, but go ahead. I, you got this. All right, Will Smith. All right, Marisol, here's the question. Who plays the character of Edward Brill Lyle, who's a former communications expert who helps Will's Robert Dean untangle a government cover-up in Enemy of the State? Um, <clears throat> that would be uh, Gene Hackman. That's correct for two points. Marisol takes her time. Hits it, and now we jump to the odd couple with question, uh, excuse me, category number four, Mark. That's right, Christian. Boy, do we all miss Gene Hackman. God, he's so good. Uh, your category, odd uh, couple, for two points, and to tie the lead of deception is Disney movies. I guess uh, you so, want me to take it, Jeff? I think so, Mark. Okay, I'll take it. All righty, and here we go in the world of Disney films for two points, just to Mark the Android and Draco. Mark. What holiday are the Mad Hatter and the March Hare celebrating in Alice in Wonderland? What holiday are they celebrating in Alice in Wonderland? Five, four, Three. Uh, repeat Two. the question. Second one. Okay. What holiday are the Mad Hatter and the March Hare celebrating in Alice in Wonderland? Five. Four. Yeah, three. I, I don't got it. Sorry, Jeff. Halloween. Looking for unbirthday. The unbirthday song. All right, so it is now a two-point lead. Wait, by... wait, you know what? I'm I'm gonna challenge. I'm throwing the challenge. Yeah, I'm gonna challenge too because that's, that's not, not a holiday. holiday. A holiday. A hundred percent. Yeah, unbirthday, I'm challenging. A very merry unbirthday is a song. It's not an actual holiday. They made yeah. that up. And birthdays aren't birthday. holidays. Birthdays, birthdays are personal birthdays. things. Okay. That's all yeah. right. Hundred percent challenge. That challenge. question is not good, Mark. You're the fine. challenge on the, shh, the challenge on the table is that the question was worded incorrectly because birthday is not a holiday, right? Unbirthday, okay. unbirthday. Un Even a birthday is not a holiday. It's yeah. an event. All right. all right. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna go back for a challenge, and we'll come back in a moment.
All right, so we came back from our challenge. Shannon Barney's uh, internet unfortunately went out. She will not be back for the ruling, but we did come back with a ruling. Here it is. All right, the challenge was about the wording of the question and that a holiday was on the table, but birthdays aren't necessarily holidays. Or are they? We honor some luminaries with birthdays, making them national holidays. However, in this case, we do consider that a birthday could be a misleading statement in the context of this question, be it that it is Alice in Wonderland, and thus the challenge will be upheld for the odd couple. They will retain usage of their challenge, and they will be asked a different two-point question in the world of Disney movies to Mark Andreco. They also get back. They also get back one JTE that they used on the question because the question is not a valid question. Thank you very much, and merry unbirthday to all of you guys. Thank you. All right, removing Roxy. All right. So that being said, Mark Mark Andreco will get another point. Another question here. Um, here we go. All right. Here we go, Mark. What classic Disney film is a series of animated scenes set to famous classical music pieces such as The Nutcracker Suite? That would be Fantasia. Watched a lot of that in high school. It's a reference. I didn't actually. That's two points. All right. So we see ourselves tied up here. 30-30. And now we get to Deception once again, who now chose 11. 11 and that would be spy films spy films for adam collins spy films for adam collins are you ready adam yes all right here you go who co-stars with leonardo dicaprio and russell crowe as a jordanian security official hani salam in 2008's body of lies And five. Repeat the question. First one. Here it is. Who co-stars with Leonardo DiCaprio and Russell Crowe as Jordanian security official Hani Salam in 2008's Body of Lies? Five. Four. Three. Cliff Curtis. Looking for Mark Strong. Looking for Mark Strong. That is the answer, Mark Strong. All right, so sets up Jeff Snyder here. Shake it off. You take the lead if he hits this question. Mark, category number nine. That's correct. And this category harkens back to the Wheaties boxes immediately behind Jeff because it's in the world of sports. Movies. Sports movies. And here we go. Jeff, for three points and a three-point lead. What film, based on a 1963 book, chronicles the bribery scandal of the 1919 Chicago White Sox? Eight men out. Christian, the odd couple are now winning by three points. All right, so the odd couple have set themselves up with a position to win here because it bounces back to Deception. If Deception hits their five-pointer, then they're going to have to force the odd couple to win. However, if Deception misses this question, then the odd couple will go on to the finals to await the winner of Final Exam and the Founding Fathers. All right, Deception, your category comes in the realm of Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. And you have this question. Here it is. Who plays the character of Nora Christie in 1992's Far and Away? Nora Christie? Would that be his co-star Nicole Kidman or someone less obvious? Five, four, Let's repeat the question. Second one. Who plays the character of Nora Christie in 1992's Far and Away? Nicole Kidman is jumping out to me. Um, even though it's a five, Adam, what do you think? 
Or do you want to use one more repeat? We have one more, right? Yeah, let's repeat the question one more time. Who plays the character of Nora Christie in 1992's Far and Away? So Nicole Kidman's in it. I'm trying to run down the cast list. I can't think of anyone else who would be named Nora. Uh, so but I, let's, let's go for Kyrie. Four. Uh, Nicole Kidman, final answer. And you're winner! Yes! And to the next round, the couple! was Barbara Babcock. Barbara that was an impossible um, five pointer. No shame in that. No shame in that, guys. Um, That's a tough question. I, mean, I was thinking of a different BB actress. I was thinking of friend of Leffen. Yes. Babka, did you know that yes! one? Yes. I love you guys so much. I'm so proud of you. We're back, baby. Corner oh, Snyder. Oh, we need big points here, Roxy. You do it. Sorry, you Shannon. <laughs> You take out corruption. You take them out. You did it to the exchange. Now you do it. the first people to kind of knock Adam Collins off his horse. How is it feeling? Not the first to kind of the first to do it. Don't forget that, Christian. But if there's anybody who could do it, I knew it was us. Uh, the Odd Couple are my favorite team for a reason. They have so much grit and tenacity and ability to communicate. And it it took us. I, I, it's just incredible. It's incredible what they did. I feel amazing. I'm so glad we won, and I'm equally as glad that they lost. Uh, this team is the team. They're the team. That's the way it is, and they've got heart and soul, and it showed today. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of them. All right, uh, Mark, Jeff, right. It, it was looking like we were going to go to sudden death, worst-case scenario for deception. So heading in, to round number three, what did you think of your chances? I mean, Marisol and, and Adam, they, they were just lights out. Well, I mean, oh, go ahead, Jeff. All right, I'll go. Um, going into <laughs> round two, when 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 they when they sped, sped through Spike Lee, we were a little nervous because they got a perfect round. And then we showed why we're the odd couple and why we're here and why we deserve to be here. And we got a perfect round. And I got to say, hats off to Jeff and Roxy about the challenge because if I was a singles player I wouldn't have challenged that because I was thinking the whole time birthday but that's not a holiday so they they did that but uh yeah and hats off hats off to deception I mean they played there's no shame in this game either if either team lost this is a this was a game that was fun to play and fun to watch and what Schmodown is all about so mad respect to them but I'm, I was the first person to beat Ethan Irwin and now I'm the first person to co-beat him so boom put that on the five for a while. Well, there you go. So, Jeff, let me let me ask you here. You said in the beginning of this thing, you just want to get that belt back. You would be the only person in Schmodown history to win the team's championship a third time. So, doing this, beating him, do you now hope to see either the founding fathers, John Roca, Dan Merle, or do you want to see Paul Oyama again and Lon Harris? What say you? I mean, I'd definitely rather see Paul and Lund because I don't think that they're as good as Roca and, and Merle, but I want a piece of Dan Merle. And if I have to go through John Roca to do it, God knows that John Roca is my good luck charm in the team's league because he's never beaten me in teams and he probably never will. So yeah, I would love to get a shot at Roca and Merle. I, you know, hats off to Deception. I thought they played great today. I mean, a, a perfect game for Collins through two rounds. They sped through the Spike Lee thing. When you guys called us back in, I was like, Jeff, whoa, that was too fast. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff said, oh, crap, that was fast. <laughs> but I will say, Marisol, you really impressed me. I, I can't believe it was Adam Collins who's the one who dropped the ball for your team. It feels great that the, the revenge tour is continuing. If you beat me, you can count on losing the next time you, fit, you face me. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, Jeff, because like, even though like, you, you know, you take corruption out, I know that it must have felt sweet to beat Shannon Barney here, but also, you know, Adam Collins hands you that, that loss in the singles tournament. So taking him out of this tournament, is this a new rivalry, uh, you know, in the Schmodown? I'll tell you, uh, I, I think it just may be. Collins is as good a player as I've ever seen. He, he ran into some tough three, uh, sorry, third round questions here. That, that five pointer was very, very difficult. Um, but yeah, you know, like, uh, I, I, this gives me some confidence. Like, I know he's beatable now, so that's good. How's it feel, Collins? How's it feel to lose for the first time? He'll be fine. He'll, it's going to be one of the very few losses in his career. It's 
losing losing sucks, but it's good for you. So, well, Rox, <laughs> let me let me spin it to you there, Rox, because like I said, now you Shannon now is out of this tournament, and the points for either swag or fence actually exchange to catch up. Now you've put a stop to the bleeding to the other factions at the moment. So does that give you some satisfaction to know that Shannon now has to wait for the spectacular in order to get some uh, more points? It does, but not if it means that the exchange does anything with it. So, you know, it's like the the between Tom and Shannon, I don't know, it, on any given day, it's a lesser of two evils. Uh, at this point, drip, drip, baby. So you know how I feel about that. <clears throat> But no matter what, rock stars forever. And I think what this showed today, just about the movie trivia showdown, is that if you want to compete with the big boys and girls, then you need to go either eight or seven in round one with that bonus point if you're eight, and you need to go perfect in round two. That's the way we're playing these days. That's what teams looks like. So I think that Deception did an unbelievable job today. Uh, just not good enough to be the odd couple. Well, and Roxy, you know, I say that, too, because now you guys go up against either the Founding Fathers or Final Exam. So you will have an opportunity to take out either Swag or the Finstock Exchange again uh, once the finals come around. So there you go. The Rockstars do it again. Great second half here by the Rockstars and Mark Andreco and Jeff Snyder, the former champions, winning one more hey, match. I yeah. forgot and one more thing. I forgot my whole thing. Yeah. Christian. I, like I'm not gonna pretend. I'm not gonna say I'm best friends with Kevin Smets. You know, I, I don't know him all that well. But when I saw his post, it moved me to tears. And I'm dedicating this win to Kevin Smets, obviously, and the odd couple to run the rest of the tournament. Kevin Smets, we're with you, buddy. Crush it. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, and and Drake, you wanted to say something or no? You're good. Uh, yeah, I just want to uh, wonder if any of the record keeper fans who keep stats. I think this was the first time I had a perfect game. Well, we'll have to check in. Frankie Numbers will let us know for sure. Yeah, that, that, that pales in comparison to Kevin. I don't want to feel like we, I love, we love Kevin, but the stats, I'm, I'm just curious because I've been doing well, this a long well, time. We will find out. <laughs> Listen to the Schmodown rundown. I'll let you know. All can right. We leave, can we leave the stream on just to see how long Snyder leaves his camera running? Let's see. Mark Andreco, Jeff Snyder winning here. Very happy, obviously, as they make it to the finals here. And now bringing back a very, very solid, solid team in deception shannon barney uh let me ask you the question here shannon so you watch this incredible performance here by deception what an amazing second round they have and as you've seen it in your tenure as a manager every player has a third round something like that so is this how do you how do you talk to your players here and let them know that you know this is all part of the game well first of all i want to say way to blow the moment andrego that was bad um also you don't have to apologize. This is their rookie season, and look at what these two have accomplished. They have put all of you on notice. Some of you are at the peak of your performances, and you have no place to go but down. Some of you were so old and ready to retire that this doesn't matter. Marisol and Adam are brand new, and look at the impact they have had on this league. Look at the games they have thrown. Look at their accuracy. You want to talk about stats? Go back and look at all that. They missed two questions against a championship team. And I'm not even the one who said those three and five pointers were absolutely insane. That's our opponents talking about how difficult they are. So that says something because uh, Mark Andreco knows his stuff. And if he's saying that's a hard, hard question, I'm actually gonna take his word for it. I could not be more, more proud of Adam and Marisol. And this is the best thing, aside from obviously winning the tournament and going on to play Spectacular, that would be the ultimate goal. But if we can't do that, this is the best thing to happen to them because they get this loss out of their system early in their rookie season. They know what it feels like. They're going to be able to process it. And that should scare the living hell out of all of you. Because if you think they're going to mope around for a minute after this, you're a lunatic. I yeah. see their, look at their faces right now. They're not disappointed in how they performed. There's nothing you can say to them or about them that's gonna shake their spirits or make them feel like they weren't worthy of winning this game. They fell a little short and it happens to all of us. I guarantee you that they're gonna come back stronger from this and they're gonna be lethal. Sorry, lethal weapons, but. Yeah, Christian, I, I might even take Janet's statement a step further in saying that the rest of the tournament is breathing a sigh of relief that they don't have to come across Deception's path. Marisol, Adam, either one of you feel free to field this question or both. You have individually put the league on notice that you're going to be a presence 
in singles going forward for hopefully many seasons to come. But as far as deception, seems like the chemistry worked pretty well today. Is this a team that you want to continue with for the foreseeable future? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I mean, Shannon already put it really well. I mean, this is just the beginning. You think a loss scares us? Look, mistrials happen all the time. All right, I will gladly take a retrial against the odd couple and we'll see and we'll see what happens that next time. I'm glad that they had to put everything they had to after being together for so long to put everything they had in the tank to beat the rookie team. Um, good for them. That's great. Because uh, this is only the beginning. I've got the coyote by my side now and he's not going anywhere. All right. Well, let me ask you this, Adam, here, too, because, Adam, I got to ask you here. This is a this is the first time that you have not heard and your winner, whether it's been in a free for all, whether it's been in a team's match, whether it's been in a, in a singles match. So the some a lot of players, whether it's the great Kevin Smets, as we've talked about, whether it's Dan Merle, it's that first loss that makes somebody kind of shake it off and say, OK, I'm coming back. How are you feeling at the moment? It's a mixture of, you know, relative disappointment, uh, but also a mild sense of relief. I've been playing games for almost two straight months, and that's my own fault because it's hard for me to lose. Uh, this match, uh, you know, could have gone either way. I maintained, correction, that an unbirthday within the context of Wonderland is indeed a holiday. That being said, I understand the challenge. Uh, as far as the, the questions we missed, Barbara Babcock, with all due respect to that uh, that that fine actress, uh, wasn't there. And I think we could live with that. As Marisol said, this is just the beginning. Uh, look what they had to do. They had to rise to the occasion to, to beat a rookie team. And normally we would be the underdogs going into this against former champions. And I think that the facts bear out that not only was Odd Couple taking this match incredibly seriously and treating it like a championship match, but everyone else understands that Marisol and I are here to stay. And when we come back in 2021 as as deception, people are still going to be on notice. Well, I mean, that's, I guess, the question here for you, Shannon. I know you hate when I ask it, but I got to ask it. And there's uh, there's two parts. Is. The first part is with Shannon. Uh, it was Shannon. That's you with Roxy. Uh, with Roxy here, the fact losing to her, I'm sure that stings a little bit. But knowing now that, um, you know, that we are getting to spectacular and you can only hang on to three players. And you've got the former champions in Team Corruption with Mike and Chance. You have this great team here with Deception. Um, you have Laura Kelly. What do you do? Well, it doesn't really sting against Roxy. This is more of like a, a charity donation because she needed like one win over us. So, you know, uh, not the ideal time to do it. But she got her one. She can she can play around with that if she wants. Um what will I do? What will I do? Oh, I bet you're all just aching to find out, aren't you? I'm not telling you what I'm doing, because you know what? I don't know what I'm doing. The year isn't over yet. The season's not done yet. All I will say is that my faction is a family, and we stay on the same page. We actually communicate with each other. We genuinely like each other. See, the thing about corruption is my players actually want to play for me, and I want them to play for me. And that seems to be a disconnect with a lot of other factions out there. And quite frankly, we don't have that problem. So yeah, I'm in a tough spot because we're all kind of on the same page here. Um, there's a lot still to be determined, but do you guys really honestly think that I'm an idiot like do you think i'm so stupid just to go okay marisol and uh adam collins let's let's see how it goes i'm just gonna throw you two together we're not gonna chemistry test you you've never met of course they've met of course they know each other look at the beautiful teamwork that they displayed for you today you think i did that haphazardly shame on you you should know better by now all right. Well, Shannon Barney making a big statement here. And obviously Marisol liking that answer, as does Adam Collins. Hell of a run here by Marisol. Hell of a run, obviously, from Adam Collins. Adam Collins, we will see you again as we will see you at the Spectacular as you challenge for the Movie Trivia Showdown Championship of the World. So, Marisol, great season. Unbelievable um, debut for you this season. Congratulations on all the success, and we will see you next season. All right. All right, so Shannon and Deception. Mark, look, this was a great match. It also, I think it cemented the fact that Adam Collins and Marisol, they're for real. We know that. But it also showed the odd couple is one of the greatest teams that has ever played the game. 
They are now eight, they have eight wins. They are a former championship team, um, and now they have an opportunity. They just await. Are they going to find? Are they going to? There's a possibility that we could see the former movie trivia showdown champion odd couple against the former movie trivia showdown champion founding fathers. Now listen, final exam playing a hell of a season this year. They still could make it, but either way, this is a hell of a tournament with a lot of pros coming at it to get to the spectacular in just a month away. Yeah, we thought we might see a points record today. There, every one of these matches we have coming up is a option for the all-time points record, whether combined, individual, perfect games galore. But I will say this about Deception is that, yeah, they're just rookies, but they're already considered one of the greatest teams currently in the Schmodown. And that was the question at the top of the show, Christian, is Odd Couple, are they still going to be able to have that same fire? It's better to burn out than fade away. I don't see either one of those happening anytime soon for the odd couple. They appear as locked in and as focused a team as we've ever seen them. That's absolutely right because the odd couple, look, we knew how Snyder was playing. We knew in the singles. And I think Mark Andrake will even tell you himself that he's had a he's had an up and down uh, year in general, right? There was something about that last match with Mark Andrake when he played with Snyder that I think that he just kind of locked in again and he feels comfortable and he feels um, he feels at home and he feels like the, this is his support system. You can see it in his face, even in that particular round in the second round when he trusted in Jeff and Jeff said, no. It's not that it's the Manchurian candidate. And he said, you're right. And he listened to his partner and they played very well. You have him and Draco and Snyder playing like that. They're going to be very tough to beat. So chemistry all around with that, ladies and gentlemen, what an absolute crazy match it was. But the odd couple and the rock stars advancing to the finals as they await the winners of final exam representing swag and representing the Finstock exchange. The Founding Fathers, Dan Merle, John Roca. It's all going to happen, and it's coming up quick. And don't forget the Schmodown Spectacular. Five massive matches happening, and you can get it. Are you a $10 patron? Well, go become one. $10 patrons are going to get it. That's right. Right the day that it drops, you'll get it. Or you can just go to the Schmodown Live and get it. The tickets are available now. So for Mark Ellis, I'm Christian Harloff. We'll see you next time.